Good evening. Good evening. I welcome you here today as we gather together at the beginning of a new church year, uh, the first of Advent. We'll follow the order of service as you find it in your bulletin, and we'll begin by singing our opening hymn, hymn 331. 331, we'll do all the verses. We confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. 
We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We just deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated. Our Old Testament reading this day, which again is a basis for our message, comes to us from Exodus chapter 5. We begin reading with the first verse. Afterward, Moses and Aaron went and said to Pharaoh, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, Let my people go, that they may hold a feast to me in the wilderness. But Pharaoh said, Who is the Lord, that I should obey his voice and let Israel go? I do not know the Lord, and moreover, I will not let Israel go. Then they said, The God of the Hebrews has met with us, Please let us go on a three days journey into the wilderness, that we may sacrifice to the Lord our God, lest he fall upon us with pestilence or with sore. But the king of Egypt said to them, Moses and Aaron, why do you take the people away from their work? Get back to your burdens. And Pharaoh said, Behold, the people of the land are not many, and you make them rest. From their burdens. Here then also reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 1, begin reading with verse 3. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that was given you in Christ Jesus, that in every way you were enriched in him in all speech and all knowledge, even as the testimony about Christ was confirmed among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift, as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ, who will sustain you to the end, guiltless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful, by whom you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ. Our Lord. And please rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Gospel this day comes to us from Mark chapter 13 and begin reading with verse 24. But in those days, after that tribulation, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven and the powers in heavens will be shaken. And then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. And then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and it puts out its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all these things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But concerning that day or that hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Be on guard, keep awake, for you do not know when the time will come. 
It is like a man going on a journey when he leaves home and puts his servants in charge, each with his work and commands, the doorkeeper to stay awake. Therefore, stay awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening or at midnight, or when the rooster crows, or in the morning, lest he come suddenly and find you asleep. And what I say to you, I say to all, stay awake. Thus far, the gospel of our Lord. We join together in confessing our Christian faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. You'll find that printed in the inside back cover of your hand. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of His Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnated by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for their mission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. May be seated as we'll sing our next hymn, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, in 357, and we'll do verses 1, 5, and 7. 1, 5, and 7.
beloved in the Lord. We're nearing the end of our series on the book of Exodus. Next week, we'll, we'll wrap it up. But really, in many ways, it's good that we conclude in the season of Advent with these last two weeks in the series. Because much about the book of Exodus is about God making his advent, his appearance among the people, delivering them, and they then responding in worship. Therefore, today I'd like to take some time and consider with you our Exodus and how it leads us to worship and what that looks like in a variety of ways. First of all, we explore the reason why we gather together regularly. You may have heard the statement before, I don't need to be in church to be a Christian. But when God met his people at Mount Sinai, the Lord God spoke to Moses, and in Exodus chapter 20, verse 2, he said this, I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of this house, of slavery. God had delivered his people. And in Christ Jesus, God has delivered us. Oh, it is only natural that we would then want to worship our Lord. Much of the book of Exodus really is about worship when you look at the chapters and give it some thought. In fact, when Moses first appeared to Pharaoh in our Old Testament reading today, in Exodus 5, verse 1, he said this, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, Let my people go, that they may hold a feast to me in the wilderness. In other words, Moses is saying, Let us go so that we can go out into the desert and we can worship. Pharaoh refuses. Later in Exodus chapter 7, Moses again meets with Pharaoh, this time along the banks of the Nile River. This was before the first plague. And he said this, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, Let my people go, that they may serve me in the wilderness. You see, freedom from Pharaoh, freedom from Egypt, means freedom to worship. In my preparation, I came across uh, this illustration. Imagine you're out in the woods and you come across someone and they're feverishly working and trying to cut down a tree. You greet them, ask them how it's going. They say, well, I'm, I'm beat, I'm exhausted. Well, how long have you been at this? Oh, for five hours now. The, sh sh the saw is dull and I'm tired. Well, why don't you take a break? Catch your breath, have a drink of water, and sharpen your saw. And the person responds and says, No, I can't do that. I'm too busy. I've got to get this tree cut down. Can you imagine something so foolish? If he would only stop, catch his breath, have a drink of water, and sharpen his saw, he'd get the tree cut down a lot faster. Sometimes people approach worship in such a manner. I'm too busy. I can't stop. I don't have time for this day of rest. But our Lord invites us to worship. He gives to us a Sabbath rest, a rest that is found in our Lord Jesus Christ, a rest that is found in the one who makes his advent among us. to worship, to sharpen our saw, and to go about the tasks that God puts before us. Much of the book of Exodus, the last half of the book, deals with the instructions, the gathering of materials, and the construction of the tabernacle and the Ark of the Covenant, the place where they would gather for worship. Oh, it might not be quite like the exciting stories of God appearing to Moses at the burning bush or the, the plagues against Egypt or the crossing of the Red Sea. But you see, the burning bush, 
plagues of Egypt and the cross in the Red Sea happen so his people may be free to worship. Offer the sacrifice, the shedding of blood for the forgiveness of sins, that they may find rest not only now, but for eternity. We gather to worship because God has delivered us and he blesses us here in this place. In Exodus chapter 30, verse 6, when God is describing about building the tabernacle, he says this about the Ark of the Covenant. He says, I will meet with you there. This is the place where God would meet with his people. He would dwell with them in the midst of the camp of Israel. This is where Advent would take place, at the tabernacle, at the tent of meeting, and specifically at the Ark of the Covenant. Today we may not have a tabernacle or an Ark of the Covenant that quite looks like that, but we do have Advent. God comes and he meets us here in this place. He meets us through his word and in his sacrament. Advent happens here. He tabernacles with us. And as we ponder this season and the upcoming season of Christmas, we're reminded of those words in John chapter 1, verse 14. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. The word became flesh and made his tenting, his tabernacle among us. This is where God comes. He comes in his son Jesus Christ to rescue and deliver. And we have been delivered, we have been rescued, and the sacrifice has been, has been offered so that we may be free to find rest and worship him. That Advent may happen in our lives. Secondly, consider some of the ways that we do worship. In Exodus chapter 20, verse 2, God says this, I'm the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. And then after reminding them how he had delivered them, gives to them the Ten Commandments at the top of Mount Sinai. You know, I find it interesting, the timing of all this. God didn't give the Ten Commandments while they were still in slavery in Egypt. He didn't give it as a condition and say, if you keep all of these commandments good enough, well, then I'll consider delivering you. No, he delivered his people and then he said, now that you've been set free, here's how you can worship me. You love me. You love your neighbor. This is how worship can happen in our daily lives as we strive to live according to the word of God. Not as a condition for our deliverance, but as a result of it. Oh, what a blessing it is that Advent has taken place. Furthermore, the Israelites that did have the tabernacle, the place where God would meet them and they would gather, and there the sacrifice would be offered, the blood would be shed, not only so that they could have rest for the one day, but that they could have an eternal rest. Their sins would be forgiven, and grace would be given to them. But as many of you know, as the story goes on, in Exodus 32, disaster happens. When Moses was up on Mount Sinai, the people grew impatient. They went to Aaron the priest and they gave him their jewelry and he melted it down and made a golden calf. A calf was a common object of worship in the ancient world, it was so in Egypt as well. 
not only did they make this idol, here you see the true disaster of it all, the grave sin they committed. As I said before, Exodus 20, verse 2, God said, I am the one who brought you out of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. But then in Exodus 32, verse 4, after constructing the golden calf, what did Aaron say to them? These are your gods, O Israel who brought you out of the land of Egypt. They turned away from worshiping the one true God to worshiping this idol. And they said, this hunk of metal is what has delivered you out of Egypt. Oh, indeed, they broke the first commandment. You shall have no other gods. And we need to be very careful here. Because our deliverance, our hope, first week of Advent, hope, our hope does not come from the things and the treasures of this world. Deliverance from sin, death, and the devil does not come about because of what we can build and construct and make or the material blessings we have. But we have plenty of our own golden calves. Rather, deliverance, rescue, and salvation, and rest comes from the Word made flesh. It comes from the advent of Christ. It is found in a manger. It is found upon a cross where he suffered for our sins, including those sins against the first commandment. It is found in the empty tomb and the joy of Easter. Our Lord Jesus has done all of this so that we may experience our own exodus, our own rescue, our own deliverance. And furthermore, he blesses us as he comes in our midst. We have a book, the Bible. We have water, holy baptism. We have bread and wine, holy communion. God comes into our midst and he blesses us here. He makes Advent happen to our, in our lives. He tabernacles in our midst. And so we worship him. Not by building the idols or the things of this world. But we worship him in freedom. Freedom to live according to his words and his commands. Freedom to walk in the joy and the goodness of his grace. Freedom to trust in Him and the sacrifice He has given. And we worship Him as we gather here in this place. Hopefully you've received and have read the newsletter, this, our next newsletter here. If not, there's more on the welcome table in the back. But on the cover letter there, I described our new mission focus, to gather, grow and go but to gather to gather together in the book of exodus and really all of scripture stresses the importance of gathering together as a body of believers in the presence of christ and what a blessing it is when we do so God brings his grace, his rest, his love into our lives here. You know, it's interesting, the book of Exodus began with the Hebrews in slavery in Egypt, building the store cities for Pharaoh. And it ends with the Israelites free from Pharaoh and building a tabernacle and an ark where they will worship God. It really begs the question for us, what are we building? Are you building the store cities in Egypt, the idols of this world? Or are you building the kingdom of God? Are we focusing on the golden calf? Are we focusing on the peace, and love, and the grace that our God brings to us 
in Christ Jesus our Savior. The Word became flesh. He appears to come and deliver us so that we may live for Him and walk in the freedom of His grace and His mercy. Because of the sacrifice He made for us upon the cross, we now have rest not just for an hour, but we have eternal rest by His mercy. In many ways, our season of Advent is like the Exodus. God appears. He makes His presence among us to come and rescue and deliver us, just as He promised. He tabernacles in our midst, he conquers sin, death, and the power of the devil. And he does so by his sacrifice, by his love and his mercy. And he sets us free so that we can worship him in word and deed. As we trust and rely upon the sacrifice he made, as we walk in the newness of life, striving to keep those ten commandments our Lord has given to us. As we love God and we love our neighbors ourselves, what a freedom, what a deliverance, what a great thing Advent is when God makes his appearance in our midst. For then we are free to gather, we are free to worship, we are free to receive the blessings and the benefits our Lord brings to us. This is one reason why God has delivered us, namely that we may gather together and find rest. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. One way we worship the Lord God is by offering Him our lives, our time, our service, and our offerings. Please rise. Almighty oh Lord, you open your hand and satisfy the desires of every living thing. All that we have is truly a gift from you. Receive them, O oh Lord, ourselves our lives, and our offerings as we gather and worship you, the one who is rescued, delivered, and brings to us the gift of eternal grace. In Jesus' name. sacrifice upon the cross for our sins so that we may be forgiven. You overcame the world, death, and the devil by your mighty resurrection, and you have gathered us here this day for worship, to be blessed by you, and to worship you each and every day of our lives. We ask, O oh Lord, that you would receive our thanksgiving, our praise, our worship, and that you would gather us and many others faithfully throughout the year to ever receive the blessings you give. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Almighty Lord, we bring the trials and tribulations of all people before you. We especially remember this day your servants, Kent Summerfield, Diane Manship, Ken Borkman, Bo Hansen, Pat Raymond, Michael Berger, Mary Jane Gemmel, Bob Lang, Corey Rich and Arnes, James Ajay, Matilda Mohan, Pastor Hoffman, and Pastor Schoenfeld, and all that we name in our hearts. Lord, 
extend your hand of grace and strength in every trial, in every fear and in un every uncertainty, for those trials that are in our past and for those that are in our future. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, you are the Prince of Peace, and so we pray for peace. Peace among the persecuted Christians in this world. That you grant them strength, boldness of confession, and deliverance from those who persecute them. We pray, O oh Lord, as for the world in which we live, as there is much conflict. We look to the Middle East, O oh Lord, and we look to you again to bring about peace. That you'd work your hand of grace, mercy, and that you'd work all things for the good of your people and your kingdom. These things and all others that are upon our hearts and our minds, we bring before you, trusting in your mercy, as we pray the prayer you've given to us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Lord, bless you and keep you. Lord, make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord, look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We'll sing our closing hymn, and we will sing verses 1, 3, and 4. Also, as noted in the bulletin, a couple things with Rosebuds. First of all, again, they are scheduling a uh, Feed My Starving Children event uh, to pack meals. Uh, some of you have, may have participated in such a thing in the past. Uh, it's, a, it's a Saturday coming up here in, in December. The date's in your bulletin. Uh, there's a sign-up sheet on the back. If you're able and willing to make it, that would be great. Again, a great opportunity to, to love your neighbor. Also, Rosebuds is uh, conducting a fundraiser. Uh, there's a sign-up sheet in the, in the back as well if you'd like to order some goodies. And it's, um, it's pay as you order, uh, so there's an envelope there as well. On that note, um, 
<laughs> the numbers don't match from last week. So if you ordered something but forgot to write it down, let us know. Or if you just decided to give an extra donation, that's, that's fine too, but uh, then leave us a note about that as well. Also last week, I, uh, as we considered the persecuted church, I made available the prayer calendars for 2024 and the prayer guides, uh, both of which are on the welcome table, and I encourage you to take one of each and to uh, strive uh, for that challenge of each day in the year to come to pray for the persecuted Christians, our brothers and sisters throughout this world. Also on the welcome table, as the uh, season of Advent begins, uh, tomorrow is our first Advent devotion. So these again are put out by the Lutheran Hour, so there's uh, a brief devotion for each day through this season, uh, going all the way to Epiphany, uh, January 6th, so uh, feel free to pick one up as well as you leave. Any other announcements to be made this day? All right, if not seen any of them, again I encourage you to greet one another and go in his peace. <laughs>